rejoice. Are you happy you're here this morning? I want to welcome each and every one of you to the Prospect Street United Methodist Church located in beautiful downtown Marion, Ohio. <laughs> We're glad you have come to worship with us as we begin the celebration of our Lord and Savior birth. We want to prepare ourselves for the coming weeks. Guests, do we have any first time guests with us this morning? I'm never going to give that car away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Take one. Okay, I'll start again. This is the little red writing book. Now, come on, that's funny. That was my wife's idea. I, no, I doubt that. <laughs> Take it and sign it. There are two books kept. One is the, of the Methodist book of knowledge, and the other one is in, kept in heaven. So make sure that you sign it. Greetings. I have, uh, in writing, been told that we have 90 seconds to greet each other. Let's begin. Lighting the candle of hope. Oh, prelude. Thank you. Hey, I messed up the first service. I may as well mess up the second. <laughs> yes. So uh, let's um, enjoy the silence as we prepare our hearts for worship by listening to the prelude.
And now, O oh Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Today, we light the candle of hope. Advent is a season of waiting. Most of us do not enjoy times of waiting, but do everything we can to avoid or reduce them. Our instant everything culture gives ample evidence of our impatience. Whether it's waiting in traffic, waiting in line, waiting for a reply to a text message, or waiting for a test result, we view these times as inconveniences and aggravations. Yet, Advent is a different kind of waiting. The word Advent means an arrival or coming. During Advent, we eagerly anticipate and celebrate of the birth of Christ, as well as look forward to his glorious return. Unlike other times of waiting, this waiting is marked not by anxiety or dread, but by the joyful expectations. God is with us. This is the message of Christmas, and it can transform all of our waiting. Let us pray. God of hope, Thank you for sending your son into the world, Emmanuel, God with us. In this season of waiting, give us eyes to see and experience the presence and light of Christ all around us and within us. Amen. Amen. It seems to me I've kind of been remiss in leaving something out. And for fear of the wrath of the females of this church, I'd better make it right. Yes. Uh, the uh, UMW is sponsoring the annual caroling for our shut-ins next Sunday, December the 9th. A light lunch with chili will be provided immediately after the second service in the fellowship hall. Sign up sheets are in your bulletins this morning and you can plan on going with us. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worshiping God as we silently listen to the prelude. We did that. Then, where was I? Yes, 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 yes. <sighs> Let's stand for our opening prayer. Merciful God, you send your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warning and forsake our sins, that we may celebrate aright the commemoration of the Nativity and may await with joy the coming in glory in Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives, reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
us away. We were una uh, uh, Julie was unable to get a cello cellist, so um, we had a cellist right here on the organ. Isn't that awesome? And let us thank Mark, who came and played for us. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> And now is a time when uh, our ushers come forward and we take up our offerings and tithes. <clears throat> Let us pray. Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you for the gifts you give us, for the abundance we have. And Lord, as we take up these tithes and offerings, we give them to you. Multiply them, Lord, and enable us to be able to share your love with the world. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Doesn't the church look lovely? Yeah. It's beautifully decorated. Thank you to all who uh, helped um, do all the pre-decorating and those who stayed um, yesterday, after, not yesterday, last week, last Sunday afternoon. Oh, I can't talk today. Well, you might be thinking, where do hats and gloves and socks and scarves fit into the Christmas decorations? They really don't, do they? Or do they? These have been, some of these on this side were all on the mitten tree um, in the back, and they will go to people in need. And I especially want you to take a look at these. These were made by men who are incarcerated. That means they're in prison. And Charlene takes in all this wool, and they spend a long time making these. They want to give back to the community. Aren't they awesome? All different sorts of colors. So don't say you, ever, you can never do something. And so what we do is we pray over these at all the time so that those who receive them can feel God's love. So I'm going to ask you to stand up, to grab a couple or put your hands on them, spread out. And if anybody else would like to come up and put your hands on uh, these offerings, um, come on up. Don't be afraid. Come and touch these as we pray for them. Let's pray. Lord, a lot of time and effort and love has gone into making these hats and scarves. Those who have bought them or donated them. And Lord, we know that they will go to people who need them to keep warm this winter. Pour out your love into them so that those wearing them can feel your love surrounding them and protecting them keeping them warm. We thank you for those who have donated or made these objects and pray that they will find the right homes. In your name we pray. Amen. Kids, you may go upstairs to Junior Church.
<clears throat> Prayer time is never about one person. Today, it's about two from the same family. First of all, a certain someone would like to wish Jill Casey a very happy birthday on her six question mark birthday. Happy birthday. <coughs> I won't tell you who wrote this. Yeah. And on the other hand, congratulations to Stan Casey, who retired from Sims Brothers after 43 years. <coughs> Enjoy your retirement. I know they're going to be gone quite a bit next year on some fabulous trips, um, so uh, we will miss you while you're gone, but have a great time. Also, a praise from Sarah McKinney for a new full-time position work in the same time as our kids will be in school. How awesome. Laurie Compton, who comes to our first service, um, asks prayers for her father, Jim Schilling. He is in stage four prostate cancer, and he also has cancer in the L3 of his back. So um, let us remember Remember the family of David Heacock as he passed away this week. Lillian asks us to pray for the Emick family at the unexpected passing of Elizabeth. Pray for Judy as she recovers from surgery. Kathy Castle asks prayers for Tammy, a friend, who is in OSU, ICU. And Cheryl Dozema asks us to pray for two young people with serious health issues. Last week I asked for prayers for uh, Noel, and I really appreciate them. Um, she is home and doing very well. I will tell you now... <coughs> Um, she accidentally took an overdose of sleeping pills. Um, it's a, a form of depression she has that is different from mine, and she just bottoms out, and she didn't realize how many she took. So she spent a week um, in a facility, and uh, I went to visit her every afternoon. Um, her husband's giving her full support, and she's getting the help that she needs. So remember her and all those other young people who are struggling with... Um, mental illnesses of one sort or another. I want to continue to remember Janice as um, she still mourns the death of her son, Jeff. We had the celebration of his life on Friday. A uh, beautiful time just to get together and meet the family. Let us prepare our hearts as we go to the Lord in prayer today. Lord of hope, we come before your throne today. We need hope in our lives for a better future, for eternity. And that's partially what Advent is all about. A time of waiting and preparing. But we don't wait patiently. We usually busy, busy ourselves trying to get everything done that we have on our lists. 
And Lord, we don't take time to be still, to do the preparing in our hearts that we should be doing, to receive Jesus once again. Lord, we lift up all the prayer requests that we have heard this morning and include those that are on our hearts and minds. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you pour out on us, for everything we have which belongs to you. Lord, we remember those who are less fortunate than us, who must struggle from day to day just to get enough to eat. For those who have to walk miles to get water. For the homeless, the incarcerated, those trapped under the addiction of drugs, alcohol, and many other things. Lord, the world is waiting for you to come again. Help us prepare by being ready to share the gospel message with anybody who will listen. And now, Lord, we lift up to you the prayer that you taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand for the reading from God's Word today. We will be reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. This is the word of God from long ago for the people of God today. Let us pray. O Lord, in the 
beauty of this sanctuary. We sit patiently and wait to hear your word to us. You have a word for each of us. Let us open up the doors of our ears, our hearts, and our souls to receive that today. In your name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Finally, the time we have been waiting for, Advent, is here. Last week, it was kind of an in-between week, wasn't it? It seemed to be more pronounced this year. It was just over Thanksgiving, and people are putting up decorations. We had part of the church decorated here, and yet it wasn't yet Advent. People refer to the season right now as Christmas. Christmas is one day. Well, actually, it's 12, but it starts Christmas Day and then goes for 12 days. But in the culture we live in today, it's Christmas now. What happened to the waiting? We don't like to wait. That's what happened to it. So we want to celebrate Christmas every day of Advent. And then we lose this time of waiting in expectation for what? Both the expected and the unexpected. So I wonder, is Christmas really about the birth of Christ? Or today, is it more about looking forward to celebrating our traditions like decorating, gift exchange, making and eating special foods, getting together with family and friends. Maybe some of you, for some of you, Christmas comes at the Christmas Eve service when this church is full and we all stand with a candle in hand and sing Silent Night. What special traditions does your family enjoy? For our family, when we get together, we have to watch White Christmas. I love that movie, but I like to watch the movie and listen to them singing. If you watch it with my children, <coughs> you watch them do all the singing and dancing as it comes. It's crazy. A new tradition that I have had in the last three years, notice I said new tradition, is that Pastor Joe and Joyce take me, uh, well, we go out to eat, and then we go to the palace to see Christmas at the palace. It's now become a tradition, and if they ever don't ask me, I don't know what I'll do. I'll be heartbroken, I guess. <laughs> For some, it's a tradition to go see the Nutcracker. How many of you have ever seen the Nutcracker? Let me see, quite a few. Okay. How many of you wish you could go see it? Okay, all right. You notice I didn't really put up my hand. I can take or leave ballet. Have you ever wondered why is the Nutcracker performed at Christmas? Do you really know the story of the Nutcracker? People go every year, and yet they don't know the story. The Nutcracker is full of symbolism of Christ's birth and the whole story. So this year, we're going to take the Nutcracker as our guide through Advent and see Christ's birth come in a new way. When the story was written, it was originally called The Nutcracker and the Mouse King, written by a German, E.T.A. Hoffman, in 1816. So it's been around for quite a while. In 1892, the Russian composer Tchaikovsky, along with choreographers Petipa and Ivanov, took the basics of the story and turned it into a ballet. If you don't know the story, Google it, the short version, and you'll find out the story. But I'm going to talk about most of it as we go on. The story starts with waiting. Don't you hate a story that starts with waiting? 
but with anticipation and expectation as the children must wait outside the parlor while the adults are inside setting up the tree and putting on decorations and the lights, preparing and wrapping those final gifts and making sure the special treats and the candies are ready. It's a party that the children cannot attend. There's music and there's dancing, but the children must wait till the lights on the tree are lit before they can enter the room. The story is told through the eyes of Clara, a young girl. She looks into the parlor through the keyhole. She cannot see much, but just enough to know that there is much to get excited about that awaits her. On the front of your bulletin, there's a picture looking through the keyhole. Keep that picture around. Put it on your fridge. Put it on your mirror this week. As we look at Christmas through the keyhole, the tension builds and the excitement mounts in her as she watches and begins to dream about what she knows is behind the door. The tree, the lights, the candies, the gifts, the excitement. It's kind of like us today at the beginning of Advent. We know there is much to prepare, but we anticipate the excitement of all those traditions that we have in our families, new and old. We enjoy the gathering of families and friends. What we know normally happens, but we spend time fretting about getting there, don't we? We already know the Christmas story. We know that it happened 2,000 years ago. And I'm sure in 2,000 years from now, after I'm dead that long, nobody's going to care about who I was. But Jesus' birth is remembered and celebrated celebrated because he is the savior of the world. We rejoice as we hear once again the story of the angels and the shepherds and the manger and no room in the inn. But in Advent, we have the waiting and the anticipation and we feel the curiosity of how God continues to work through the son, his son's birth from such a humble beginning and can have such an impact on us today. So to return to the nutcracker, Clara is 12 years old. She's not really a child anymore, and if you talk to any 12-year-old, they'll be sure to tell you that. But she's not an adult either. She's in this in-between stage. Can you remember times in your life when you've been living in an in-between stage? Advent is that period. In between Thanksgiving and Christmas, two huge celebrations. And stuck in the middle is Advent, the waiting. It's kind of awkward, isn't it? We even sing Christmas carols. There isn't very much Advent music written and yet we wait. The door that Clara is waiting behind represents the rite of passage as she heads towards adulthood. Many times in our lives, we have to go through a rite of passage to the next thing that we will encounter. Today, sitting here, we are all citizens of heaven, but we are sojourning on the earth right now, waiting, anticipating, curious, knowing for sure that one day we will make the biggest rite of passage journey when we enter
and we're worried about whether we'll have time to make all the cookies we want to. We must be patient and wait. So many of you may be wondering, why on earth did we read scripture, a passage about when Jesus was 12 years old and stayed in Jerusalem and his parents were worried sick about him? It's the only other childhood story of Jesus other than his birth. Well, we'll get to the birth, but Luke is the only one who records this story and he has a point, and I don't want us to miss it today. You see, Jesus also is 12. It's no mistake that Clara in the ballet is 12. And he is born into this in-between stage. He's not a child any longer, but he's not quite an adult. He's curious. He's eager to become an adult. He's eager to want to move on in his life. So he stays behind in Jerusalem and begins asking questions and, and in turn teaching what he knows. He feels he is ready to join the adults to discuss the scripture. And when three days later Mary and Joseph come and find him, they're pretty upset wouldn't you be if your kid wandered off? They don't understand what's going on. But I wonder, does Jesus? You see, the point of telling this story is that Jesus must wait till the right time. In Scripture, we go from this story to the beginning of his teaching his ministry. Jesus must learn to wait. And in following him, we follow his example. In the meantime, the scripture tells us he obeys his parents. Boy, I wish kids would read this scripture and follow that like Jesus did. He obeys his parents and it tells us he grows not only in physical appearance, but also in wisdom. Kind of seems odd, doesn't it? This is God's child, the savior of the world. He's divine. Doesn't he already know everything? Sometimes we forget that he's also fully human. And in order to follow his example, he must learn to wait like we do. It is part of God's divine plan. He must live in the in-between for a while before going and carrying out his calling. We live in the in-between daily sometimes, but it's ever more noticeable at Advent. When there's more traffic, the lines at the stores are crazy. We're waiting for that package to arrive from some place that we've ordered it online. And we forget to be patient and listen for whom we are becoming. After Christmas, not that I'm wanting to jump ahead too fast, but we do the third part of belief, and that, and that is going to be all about who we are choosing to become. This is that period of time when we prepare ourselves to open our eyes and to see what God is doing in our lives. So back to the story. The time comes when, I'm sure, through the keyhole, Clara sees the lights go on on the tree, and the anticipation is just about to burst out of her. She tells the other kids, and they're all excited. Can you imagine that scene? And the door flies open, and the children come running into the room, and their expectations have been fulfilled. The decorations are beautiful. 
the candies are all over the place and there's, they can have as many as they want. The gifts under the tree look wonderful and there's lots of them for each of the kids. And as they get into the festivities, it produces extreme joy and hope for the future. It's the kind of hope the shepherds felt when the angels taught to them. The wise men desired that hope and that joy. And Mary and Joseph knew it. It's an atmosphere that you want to stay in always. But something unexpected always ruins it. In our story, Fritz, Clara's younger brother, has got tired of his toys. So he goes over and takes, you know, younger brothers are such a pain. He goes over and takes Clara's gift, which has been designed for an older, more mature child, the nutcracker. They fight over it and it breaks. Suddenly, the happiness that they had once experienced just a moment before turns into tears, and the hopeful future becomes so foggy. But for many, that's the Advent and Christmas they will receive. We get so caught up in our traditions and making sure that everything is going to come out all right that we tend to lean on these to hold our Christmas together. And when something breaks, Christmas changes, and so does our mood, and we do not know what to do. It comes in many forms, like the illness or death of a loved one, kids moving away. For me, I have two who are married, so Christmas is going to be different. It's not going to be uh, as it was. The tradition is changing. Many have financial issues and broken relationships. We often hear people say, I remember when or in the past we used to... But the truth is cannot go back. The only tradition that does not change is Jesus. Jesus' birth happened. His death and resurrection and ascension also happened. And it is in these that we find hope. And really at Christmas what we are celebrating is the hope and promise that Jesus will come again. We like to imagine him being born all over again. But what a glorious time it will be when Jesus comes again and we are all born anew, get new bodies, I'm waiting for that, and live in the new world God is going to create. As nice as our traditions are, I too look forward to lighting the Advent candles one by one as each week goes by and looking forward to Christmas Eve when we hold those candles and sing Silent Night. What if those changed? Don't worry, I'm not changing it. Do not have a heart attack. Would it still be Christmas? Would Jesus still be born? Of course. It'll just be different. So I ask you, are you waiting with anticipation to receive Jesus anew at Christmas? Or are you so focused on the preparation and the traditions that are changing that you miss the meaning? I challenge you this week to take that picture of looking through the keyhole and to take a moment and pause each day. Look through that keyhole at your own life. What are you anticipating? What are you hoping for? 
in the birth of Christ this Christmas. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we're so quick to move on from one project to another, from one activity to another, to cross things off our lists. And the tragedy is that we miss the birth. So Lord, enable us this Advent season to take some time to look at how Christ is re being rebirthed in us and who we are becoming for you. Amen. Pastor Joe, would you come? How appropriate it is that on the first Sunday of Advent, when we're preparing for the birth of Christ as a child, we skip forward to his last days on earth. It's appropriate because you can't have the birth without the cross. So we remember that today at the beginning of our time of preparing and waiting. took bread, a very common thing that they ate in those days, and we eat it today, bread, and then he broke it, and we know truly that that stood for something. What? It stood for his body, which would be broken the next day, by the piercing of the hands, the feet, and the side. And he did that for your sins and the sins of the whole world. And he did that, God did that with his son to show how much you truly love every one of you. And we should eat this bread with faith and thanksgiving. And then he took the cup, the cup of blessing and asked for the blessing from his father above. <coughs> And then he said, this is a cup of a new covenant, a new promise that I make with you, with you and all those who will come after you. Your sins will be forgiven, and you will have eternal life. And all he asks of us is that we profess by the mouth and believe it in the heart that Jesus is the Savior of the world. What a story it is to tell, and we never get tired of it. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we ask your blessings upon this bread and this cup. As we take, let us be transformed from the inside out by your spirit and by your truth. As we remember, we give thanks, and we celebrate. Be with us in the waiting, so we're ready to receive you and accept you anew this Christmas. In your name we pray. Amen. Would those who are helping please come forward? Dave? Oh. Okay. Would you do it? Thank you. The table is set. Won't you come and receive Jesus today?
this is the body of Jesus Christ, break and feed.
Let us pray. Lord, you are always ready for us to receive you in you. We thank you for the gift of communion, a sacrament that you started so that we can remember all that you did in your life and that it is not in vain. Help us to hold on to hope this week. Amen. Let us stand and sing our final song together. <clears throat> Remember to look through that keyhole. What do you see? The hope of the future. Live into it this week. Let us pray. Oh Lord, as we go forth from this place, go always before us, behind us, and beside us. Protect us and keep us. And keep us preparing for that glorious day when you will come again. And we ask all this in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In your name, amen. Sorry. Sorry.